Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So in this part we are going to be doing the mud and dust. So for this we're going to be using some AK uh, Diorama products. So that's going to give the texture of the mud. And we're going to do a bit of airbrushing for the dust. And then we'll move on to the enamels for the sort of dark mud. Um, grease stains, usual stuff like that. So what I've done here is took all the, the wheels off. Excuse the, uh, the multicoloured hull hopefully most of this will be covered anyway I've just been touching some bits in where the running gear was attached when i was painting and priming and stuff like that so um what we're going to do to start off with is like i say we're going to add some texture to this lower hull so grab my trusty pot of paint all right so we've got these splatter effects this is just dry mud from the uh, from the ak range they do uh, all different sort of textured muds with different thicknesses so this one's a little bit thinner and i think a little bit less textured it's, it's a little bit more runny as you can see still going to dry as as hard as, as the other products in the range just a bit of advice use this before on some of the some of the me uh, me older kits i've been practicing and using it it is very pigmented uh, it is a water-based product so you can kind of blend it but it's You've got to be quick. You've got to do a bit at a time. Um, so yeah, basically what I'm going to do is just sort of put it where I want it. Obviously, where mud's going to collect, you've got to obviously think as well. We're going to sorry, fingers in the way where the running gear is going to be. So it's going to, you know, collect where it's going to collect. So just going to. Um, quickly just put a napkin down because or a piece of kitchen roll should I say because this stuff can get a bit messy we prop so just gonna use it straight out the tub all right old brush best advice you get some rubbish cheap brushes you don't mind ruining because this stuff does go through Go through brushes pretty quick so you don't need a lot of it so again what you want to do is just literally dab it where you want it put it where you want it all right so we're just going to this back corner let's just move the camera over a bit so you can see like i say this is a bit thinner than the um the other products that they do So just going to dab some on the back, bit of water, just clean the brush, all right, and then just sort of streak and blend it in. Okay. This will do is just give us a foundation for any up upcoming sort of steps we're going to do. I'm just going to dab some on there, and also, you know, I'm going to concentrate more on the lower half of this one, so you can just build it up in patches. Like the brush it in the water and then just blend accordingly okay so obviously we'll be going over all the bottom bit but you can see what that's going to do is just just add that initial sort of mud dust layer Okay, can let that dry. Um, see what that dries like. Again, if we need more texture, what we can do because this one's quite smooth is grab a 
Okay, one of these, which is the bigger tubs. This is the light earth one. Again, the colour's not going to matter because we're going to airbrush over it. So this is. get the uh, top off as you can see this is a lot of a lighter color but it's a lot thicker so this is good for adding like I say adding texture so you can see how thick that is that's got you know it's got a hell of a lot of texture in it and obviously these two are compatible for mixing as well so as you can see that's got a lot more body to it a lot more pigmentation so what you can do if you want to work because I just add a bit more a bit more texture to it to uh, blend the two colours together you can take water again just soften them soften the transitions a bit soften the um, soften the hard edges to just streak it like it's run down you can't Okay, as you can see, you can see on the camera sort of the texture in there. So let that dry. That will dry back. It is it is gonna it is gonna stain, but that's it's not a problem. It's um, like I say, you're gonna cover cover it up with other products anyway. You just want that initial sort of build up of of texture and uh, sort of the mud effects, I suppose, the earth effects. So. There is a little bit of working time on this, but it is very limited because it does dry quick. So. Okay. Right, so I'm going to do, I'm going to let that dry, like I've just said, and then we'll come back, see what it's like, see if we were, we were happy with the textures and um, the placement of it, and then we'll carry on with the rest of the, with the bottom hull. So as you can see, we've got our base tones down for the mud and texturing, so... This is all dry, but there's actually no transitions, no blending. So that's going to be the next step. So um, now that's all dry, what I've done is cheap hairspray. This is just normal hold. I've just given the whole, um, the whole of the, the tank a couple of coats of this. All right, so I'm going to use that as a, a chipping fluid. And uh, what I've done is just mix up a, out of these three Tamiya colours. So 69... 57 and 72 it's just this sort of grey mud tone shall we say dust tone so this I'm going to airbrush on okay so that will just soften all the transitions between obviously um, where this thicker mud is down at the bottom of the hull I'm also going to blend it in up, up here on the front as well and with the chipping fluid then we can just sort of take off what we don't like probably around the hatch 
but what we'll do we'll just do just under here first so I've already got the airbrush loaded up that this is probably 90% and just for anybody who's interested I've just used the attacker lacquer thinners just to thin this it's a bit milder which makes it easier to chip it's not so aggressive so okay so I've got a bit in our airbrush like I say this is really thin so So it's going to take a few coats to build up, but it's going to be pretty sort of um, pretty hard to overdo it. You're going to go over everything. The only thing I'm not going to go over is obviously these parts here because I want to probably clean these off so I've got a better glue point for when the bogies are attached. Again, you've got to go, got to go steady with this because it's like I say, it's it's. Dirty thinners, for want of a better word. That you see, it's going to look like there's not a lot happening. At first, but then, like I said, we're just going to build it up, take a time. Again, this is just another step. After this, we'll probably bring out the enamels or uh, whatever your sort of chosen medium is. Pigments, if you require. It's another very subtle effect. I'm also going to just start dusting sort of, sort of this lower, lower part of the superstructure. Okay, with some three dots and dashes. Start blending in the numbers as well. So this is just going to be a general red sort of dust tone, base coat for a dust tone. Right, so as you can see, it's just starting to build up. So it doesn't seem like there's a lot happening but it is actually going on so if anybody can go up to just see what's in the bottom of the airbrush so
So as you can see, what's that starting to do? Just just put a bit of a transition in, like I was saying, just just from the thicker mud and um, sort of paste that we put on, for another word. Just to blend that in. So what I'm going to do now is just carry on, dust up the rest of the tank, and then we'll come back and do the uh, to do the chipping.
So now this initial dust tone is dry, what I'm going to do is take a little bit of water and a brush. As you can see, this is an AK. Go the right way around. Five seven nine. Okay. So, if you've not used chipping fluid before, what you do just dip your brush in. You don't need it soaking wet. All right. Get our trusty piece of napkin. All right, and then start wetting the surface. So what I'm going to do is do vertical. Vertical streaks, okay. So what this should do is activate the uh, hairspray underneath or the chipping fluid, whatever you choose to use, and then just start to just, as you can see, look, reduce. Some nice streaking effects. Okay, so this is, you know, basically you can go as far as you want. You can take it all the way off or, you know, leave it as is. Once you've done your initial one, this is actually activating pretty quick, easily. So just gentle, don't go sort of scrubbing at it. You shouldn't need to. Okay. You know, if you do take too much off, just go back with your airbrush, put some more on, just layering it back up. So, there you go. So, you can dab it as well, just to, you know, if you're in a clean spot. Like it's worn away there. Yeah. You know, if you just use the side of the brush instead of the flat, get some really, really nice effects. Okay, for the The hull as well, bottom of the hull. And I don't want to take too much off here because obviously this is where it is going to get sort of filthy. So, but again, you can do some nice streaking effects as well. You see that beading up there? It's just like the hairspray activating. What I did was as well, just if, it, if I didn't mention it before, two even coats. You don't want to flood it with a hairspray, so you've got maximum control. So. You know, um, six six to eight inches away, dust coat, let the first coat dry, then give in it another coat as well. Then you know you've got two good even coats on. So there we go, again, very subtle, not over the top at all, not a lot of contrast at the minute, that's going to come later on when we start adding the mud effects with the um, with the other products we're going to lose, uh, use. So, okay, what I'm going to do then is carry on, get the rest of the tank dusted up, the other side done, they're going to do a bit around the top as well, this is like I said, this is all covered in hairspray, so, you know, we're going to where the dust would naturally collect and then and then we'll air spray that off so okay thank you very much for watching and we'll see you in the next part for the uh for the mud and the mud bits shall we say <laughs>